colors I need are the following. Yellow, orange, white, black. In Desmos, you can create a list of colors using lists for each color channel. This can then give a list of objects different colors. However, you do require two lines to do this. Line 1, define the color as a variable. Line 2, define the objects. Or do you? With Desmodder, we can expose the metadata. The color is stored as a variable, but why not just use its definition? Now, even after deleting the color variable, the colors still stay. One-liner! Everything in the list will need to be of one type of object. I have chosen to use parametrics as they are the most versatile. Parametrics allow you to shade in an enclosed area. This makes coloring in the flag trivial, though working on how to draw it is a bit less trivial. For the background, I have used a method called Linear Interpolation, or LERP. Desmos allows for the following syntax. A plus the quantity of B minus A times T. Say you have two points, A and B, and also a variable, T, as the parameter that controls a third point. When T equals zero, the result has the point at A. And when t equals 1, the result has the point at b. Slide t between 0 and 1, and the result is a point somewhere between a and b. Replace capital T with lowercase t, which Desmos dedicates for parametrics, and you get the path that capital T takes, which is a straight line. Suppose you have a list of points, p1. The equation for a linear spline is like this. These square brackets are grabbing a point in the list. The number is called an index. Elements are indexed from 1, as in the first point is p1 of 1, the second point is p1 of 2, etc. But t starts from 0, so we add 1 to start it on the first point, and we add 2 for the point after it. When t is between 0 and 1, the index will snap down to 1. This is because the index is floored. It takes the integer part of the value. So all 1.x values index to 1, all 2.x values index to 2, and so on. This controls which two points we literally interpolate between. The modulo operator at the end returns the remainder from dividing the two points. Dividing t by 1 will simply have the decimal values as its remainder, and so this controls the lerp itself between two points. Then, as shown earlier, we can fill in the shape it makes. In case that all flew over your head, here's all you need to know. The equation below takes a list of points called p1. If you set the bounds of t to be between 0 and the number of points that are in the list, it connects all the points together with straight lines. This can then be used to create the flag by filling in the area that the set of lines enclose. And that's the background done! Now for the much harder part. Drawing the dragon. We could continue using our linear spline for the entire dragon, but we can work smarter than that using Bezier curves. This video won't cover what they are in detail, all you need to know is that they are curves defined by a small set of control points. For our specific case, we'll be using a cubic Bezier curve. The equation for it looks like this. Again, not going into the details. The curve connects to the control points at the ends, and the other two guide the curve. You can use the exact same trick as before to create a spline. From this, I scrambled together some quality of life features to help me draw the curves. After that though, it was time to do the fill for the whole dragon. Setting everything up. And so it begins.
So that's the outline done. Though, I did find the current Bezier spline function rather large and gawky, so now I'm compacting it. First off, I'm going to rewrite it so that everything is organized more neatly. Now, we are going to use summation notation. You can see a quick demo of how it works above. So this is why I reorganized it, as it makes it much easier to convert now. This uses what's called the Bernstein basis polynomials. The 3 over n at the start is called the binomial coefficient, and produces the 1, 3, 3, 1 coefficients. Now before we proceed to the outline stage, we need to unshade some parts. Namely, these are the sections which need to be removed. Let's go back to the example parametric from earlier. Here, the outer curve draws counterclockwise. If you draw another curve inside in the same direction, nothing happens. But if you draw in the opposite direction, then it unshades the area. There's just one issue. I optimized the Bezier spline function even more. The splines share a point, so it stores only three-fourths of the original points. Essentially, all the curves are stuck together. But there is a way around this. By using points which don't have valid coordinates, such as 0 times infinity comma 0, you can break the chain apart. Like so. So that's what I did. Albeit, I was having some issue trying to get it working. Okay, you know, the entire time I kind of didn't even think to make a progress save on this. Ah, screw it. We play dangerously here. Though, now we have one final big leg to this project. Doing all the line art. To cut down a bit of work, I copied the fill order and outlined it in black. I also adjusted the one-liner to get ready. But yeah, that's all that's left. Setting up the spline tools. Get to work.
Well, it's finally done. All that's left is to normalize all the sections. That is, make all the sections fit in the range T between 0 and 1 inclusive. This is thankfully as simple as just multiplying. Now you can finally combine it all into one line. Ah, oh, hell no, Argon, I ain't reading that for you. Sure, it's one line, but that's like a really long line. It's scrolling way too fast for me to read some Well, anyways, the link to this graph is in the description if you want to see this one-liner in its full glory. I'm stopping now. Right, so what he just heard there was my friend reading out basically the entire video here. Uh, I finished this video back in February, but uh, when I sent it to my friend, he said that he wanted to do a voice swap for April Fools. It's currently August. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, taking a long time, unfortunately. I have been not having a lot of time to edit videos, but anyways, I'm going to leave you be with uh, the bloopers. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks so much for watching. Love you all. Bye bye. Is a point somewhere between. You know, actually, oh, no. I. Doing this real time kind of sucks. I'm going to actually write this out. Okay, it is like, um, two or four hours later after I stopped, and I have rewritten the entire script into a Word document so that I can read it out with the proper pacing for all those sections where you cut it off mid sentence. Desmos allows for the following syntax A, the quantity of B minus A. Oh, hold on, that's a plus. When T. Okay, scroll down. From this is no, that, 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 there's a word missing. There's a missing word here. Hold on. Though now we have one final big leg. What a wonk! What a clunky sentence.